Hi, I'm Nika Mastrangelo. Welcome to The Transcript. This week, The Transcript looks into what it takes to be a citizen, joins the unified basketball team, looks into Hispanic Heritage Month, investigates Go Guardian, and explores ASMR. Welcome to Keeping Up with the Class Officers. Hi, I'm Carolyn. And I'm Lily. And we're from the senior class. I'm Tim. And I'm Addie, and we're from the junior class. I'm Adele. And I'm Jake. And, and we're, we're from, from the, the sophomore, sophomore class. class. I'm Audrey. And I'm Lucy, and we're from the freshman class. We're coming to you from the hallways of NHS to give a few quick updates on class activities. Big sales will be happening Tuesday and Thursday of this week. Class of 22 t-shirts will also be available for $15. The sophomore class will be selling water bottles like these. The flag football game is coming up this November. Check your email for information about practice times and purchasing shirts, which will be $20. Come to the homecoming football game next Friday at 7 p.m. Haunted Homecoming is on October 27th, and tickets are on sale now for $10, and there'll be $12 at the door. Remember to check on your class Facebook page or student email to find information about float building dates and times. Booster Week is next week, and we're here to remind you to show spirit for your class on each theme day next week. Monday is Class, class theme, theme Day. Vine Meme Day is on Tuesday. Brought to you by the class of 9 plus 10. Wednesday's pajama day. Hey Tim, say up for pajama day. Thursday is Halloween day. Boo! Ah! And Friday is blue, blue and gold. gold. Come out next week and show your class pride. We'll see you Monday and thanks for keeping up with the class officers. Hi, I'm Willa Sipple. And I'm Sarah Fina Fortman. Welcome to Tell It Like It Is. In the Trump era of politics, it is becoming increasingly difficult for immigrants to feel safe in the United States. Tensions have been higher as their well-being hangs in the balance. Obtaining citizenship in the United States has hurdles of its own that can take years to overcome. We sat down with Lori Melman, coordinator at the Center for New Americans, in order to learn more about what these hurdles are in the national naturalization process for many immigrants. We have a citizenship and immigration program that's dedicated to legal services. We work closely with the folks from U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, USCIS, and they would always, in the old days, they would always say to us, we're the good guys, and the guys from ICE, those are, those are the bad guys. Um, but of course, under the Trump administration, that famous sentence where a nation of immigrants came off the mission statement. We have a relationship with USCIS because we do a naturalization ceremony every year, um, and they've always purported to comport themselves professionally. We have reported to them interviews that are um, really confrontational. The interview consists, they, they can ask you up to 10 questions about civics and history, but they can choose from 100 questions. We took to the halls of NHS to see how well students at our school would do on a U.S. citizenship test. It is Donald J. Trump. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Washington, D.C. It, it would be Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. 26. 21? Somewhere in the 20s, Barlett. I'm guessing 26. 29 amendments? Barr is going to kill me for this one. 27. 270? I, I, I don't know. 512. 435. 45. Jesus. 35. 35. Um, 35. 1783. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. No, um, okay, I got it wrong. 1779. <laughs> 1786. 1776. 1780. It was written beginning in 1787. It was ratified by 1789. He was in World War II. Eisenhower was a general in World War II. World War II. You elected a U.S. representative for four years? Four? Six. Two years. Two years. 
my God. One of them was six. Four years, six years, six. Unfortunately, we were unable to interview any actual students at the Center for New Americans for concerns over their privacy. But if you want to help out, go check out the Center for New Americans website. Thanks for watching. This was Tell It Like It Is. Hi, I'm Lulu. <laughs> Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? The Unified Basketball Team is a brand new program here at the high school, allowing students with disabilities to play on a regulated team against neighboring high schools. The team consists of athletes and partners who play and practice each week. I spoke with team members Carissa Karowski and Sammy baker Paquette to learn about their experience playing on the team. I joined the team because it just kind of seemed like a lot of fun and uh, the people I sat with at lunch last year, like Sammy and Tay, and they kind of talked me into doing it. So I think it's a good sport. Uh, the lessons I learned from this sport is uh, that it's not all about the points, it's just kind of having fun and if you miss it's fine, like the team is behind you 100%. So. Playing basketball with my friends is fun. I also talked with Coach Gill to learn about his experience starting the Unified Basketball team here at the high school. I actually uh, coached Unified track at Holyoke High the last two years, and I retired from Holyoke schools. I thought I was done teaching, and then I saw this posting for Unified Basketball. Uh, I went to college with Coach McGrath, and we talked about it. We decided to give it a shot that we were excited for the opportunity to coach together. We like the uh, kids to improve individually and as a team. Uh, our motto is try your best and have fun. It's not about the winning and the losing. It's about the sportsmanship and the teamwork, getting along and just having fun. This is my first year at Northampton, so I didn't know any of the students, athletes. So it's just a process of getting to know them. Uh, really good kids. Kara uh, has been very supportive as the athletic director. Uh, everything's been great up here in Blue Devil Country. I'm joining the band and cheerleaders in supporting the Unified Basketball Team on Wednesday, October 24th at 4 p.m. In other sports news, football is away tonight at 7 o'clock in East Long Meadow, and Cross Country has the Twilight Invitational meet all day tomorrow. Thanks for watching Hamped Up. I'm Lulu Kesson. Hi, I'm Gabe. And I'm Gigi. Welcome, Welcome to, to Tuned In. in. In recent years, computers and technology have become increasingly integrated into education. With many middle and high schools issuing computers to their students, parenting software such as GoGuardian has flooded the market. These programs are specifically marketed for schools and teachers as a way for them to monitor what websites and applications students are accessing while in class. School administrations are also able to restrict students from visiting websites containing inappropriate content such as sexual content, illegal drug use, self-harm or violence, and hate speech. We talked with several teachers at NHS to hear their perspective on these programs. I have started using GoGuardian because it is um, a way for me to ensure that students are focusing on the work that they're supposed to be working on at that time. Um, it shows you which websites students have been spending a percentage of time on. Um, and so it gives you a pie chart that shows you basically which websites were being visited um, and for how long. I think what's important is for students to know that um, ultimately this is in everybody's interest, best interest. And I feel like the reality is when they, when you guys go out into the real world, um, you cannot assume that your information is private. And so to get into the habit of practicing, you know, practicing good habits online when you're in school, I feel like this is a safe place to do this. So I use GoGuardian so I can really keep track of what students are working on when we have the Chromebooks or even if we're in the computer lab. And not just keep track of it, but kind of be able to control or monitor or also kind of stop students from using stuff or accessing sites they don't want them to be on. So I'm able to message students either one-on-one -on -one or as a group, which for my elective, my Middle Eastern class, can actually be a great asset, especially moving forward as we're gonna function as kind of a workspace. 
I understand that students would have concerns about GoGuardian and me viewing their screen, and I try to make it clear to them that I'm accessing it during class. Students are worried that teachers are seeing what they're doing outside of class, of which I have absolutely no interest in doing and wouldn't want that for myself either. I don't want, I wouldn't want to know, quite frankly. So I understand that they have concerns, and if they have concerns, then I have concerns. As use of this software becomes more commonplace, issues of privacy have come to the forefront of both ethical and legal debate. And I have a couple of concerns. My one concern is around their, their surveillance. So these softwares have the capability to monitor every click, um, every search that kids do, uh, even when they're at home. And they also have the power to turn on a camera when the kids are at home. And the Guardian in particular has been found to have done that in the past. Tune in next week. Thanks for watching. Buenos días mis amigos, esta semana la selección de fútbol de los Estados Unidos perdió 2 a 4 a la selección de Colombia. En otras noticias... ¿Sabían que estamos en el mes de la herencia hispana? Pero la verdadera pregunta es, ¿qué es un hispano? ¿Y qué es un latino? ¿Y qué es un latinoamericano? ¿Y un español? Empecemos por lo simple. Un español no es nadie sino los chavales de España. Un latinoamericano es cualquier parcero, maje, pana o boludo que habita en América Latina. Los latinos somos los que provienen de América Latina, pero hemos estado viviendo y creciendo en los Estados Unidos. Entonces un español no es latino porque no viene de América Latina, pero un brasileño sí, aunque no hablan español. Por lo tanto, un hispano es cualquier compadre que proviene de país hispanohablante, pero que ahora vive en los Estados Unidos. O sea, que un brasileño no es hispano porque Brasil no es hispanohablante. Pero en español, claro que sí. Para entender más sobre el ser latino, hablamos con ellos. Y parte de lo que pasa es que no conocemos la historia. Y mucha gente no conoce la historia del país y el rol y el tiempo que llevan uh, latinos en este país. Recientemente estuve yo en California y California es un buen sitio donde uno se acuerda, se puede acordar que el nombre de la mayoría de las ciudades son en español. Um, aunque um, hablamos un diferente lenguaje y tenemos como diferentes tradiciones, como no somos tan di diferentes. Como... Bueno, una de las consecuencias uh, eh, debi eh, debido a los estereotipos Por ejemplo, el hecho de no conocer la historia es no entender por qué hay latinos en este país. Los latinos están por todas partes en este país haciendo un trabajo importante y cuando se los ve solo como gente a la que le gustan las fiestas, que no se toman la vida muy en serio o que no hacen cosas serias, entonces hay la tendencia a percibirlos de esa manera, a percibirlos como alguien que no es importante y eh, eso lleva a la discriminación, porque cuando tú crees que alguien no es importante, te sientes con derecho a tratarlo como um, alguien que es menos que tú. Si alguien me pregunta que si los latinos están quitándole los trabajos a las otras personas, Lo primero que yo diría es que no existe una separación en realidad entre los latinos y las otras personas. O sea, los latinos son, tienen tanto derecho como las otras personas a tener un trabajo, a tener una vida digna. ¿Ya? Gran parte de este país eh, fue colonizado por los españoles y en, en muchas partes de este país se hablaba español antes de que se hablara inglés. Hay todavía en muchos estados de este país gente que ha vivido allí desde la, desde la época en que esos estados eran parte de México y siempre han, siempre han hablado español. Muchas gracias y feliz mes de la herencia hispana.
softly into a microphone or make satisfying noises. These videos are found to be very satisfying and create a sense of tranquility and relaxation for the viewer. ASMR is also being researched for its scientific and therapeutic effects. We were wondering what things in this school we could use for ASMR. Thanks for watching. Be sure to go to nhstechnology.org to watch this week's online extra. It is for students who want to see the world, to have a really immersive experience in a developing country, and have the opportunity to engage with students from all backgrounds across their region.